Well, praise God, friends. Thank you so much for joining us on this day of the 30 day video devotional through my new book called The People Factor. And listen, after this video is over, if you haven't picked up a copy of The People Factor, drop what you're doing, go to your nearest bookstore, download it on Amazon for your Kindle or download it on iBooks because I've been saying this and I'm thoroughly convinced and the feedback from all around the world has confirmed this. This book is going to change your life. It's going to change the way you do relationships and it's going to push you further into the destiny and the purpose that God has for you. So listen, I'm excited about today because uh, not only are we joined by a man who I love, we're joined by a man whom the world loves, and I'm honored to be a son. I'm honored that he consented years ago to father me and to mentor me uh, and to just be my spiritual covering, and I respect him tremendously, but I'm grateful that he's uh, been that person in my life and will continue to be that person in my life. I'm talking about, I call him dad, but you know him as Bishop T.D. Jakes. Bishop, thank you so much for taking time to be with me on today. Uh, thank you, Pastor Man. I'm so, so thrilled uh, to have this opportunity to talk to you. Uh, I, I have to say, because of the relationship that we have, uh, I, I was really anxious to see and to read uh, your thoughts. I've never seen them penned before. Uh, I am approached by literally thousands of people who have books that they want me to read or endorse or do a forward on or something that uh, that it is overwhelming. So, uh, but when I sat down to read this book, this book is absolutely incredible. Wow. It is, it is just so much more than I would have even expected. I mean, I knew you were brilliant, but uh, the, the way in which you laid out uh, this book, The People Factor, I, I, I cannot recommend it enough for everybody because there's not one of us, no matter uh, the sector of life that we work or operate in, that are not affected in some way, either by our personal relationships, our business relationships, our relationships with ourselves. Uh, you are bombarded with relationships. It is the one thing that you don't hear talked about in church and you don't hear it talked about in school. There, there's very little to guide you as to how to steer yeah. uh, through the vicissitudes of human relationships and human contacts. And this is such such an exhaustive, uh, deeply thing. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I want to talk about it. I want everybody to get their hand on it. I'm, I'm really going to make this a part of the curriculum for our church. Right. I think it's something that everybody needs. My staff, I'm going to recommend it to all the people that are being mentored by me. Uh, our assignment to, today is to talk about when helping you is killing me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dad, let's talk about it because in that chapter, I really uh, struggle with the notion and communicate in many ways uh, to many people the mere fact that sometimes we can be in toxic relationships where we're adding and pouring value into other individuals but the mere fact that we're doing that is depleting our own life there's an old adage that says that you can't choose your family but you can choose your friends well oftentimes in the workplace oftentimes depending on the type of relationship uh, you don't have that level of control over it and you are forced to sometimes learn how to have healthy relationships with unhealthy people. And that's really what I deal with in the chapter. Why do you think that that's significant? Uh, you've seen it, I'm sure, in all walks of life. You have excelled at great levels. Uh, and your ability to do that uh, is also because you've learned how to navigate through unhealthy relationships. Let's, let's talk about it. Well, you know, one of the things that I thought was very poignant that you pointed out in the chapter that really, really overwhelming, we often tell people that we should associate with people with similar backgrounds. You know, we went to the same high school. We like we both like sports. Uh, we were both born in March. Uh, your mother was a Delta. You know, my mother was a Delta. And we get involved with people from those similarities. But in this chapter, you talk about that sometimes shared experiences uh, and shared pains are not the good basis for relationships. And then you go to really prove your point in such a powerful way that sometimes the only thing that we have in common is where we came from, yeah. but we don't have the same goal as it relates to where we're going. Yeah. And I thought it was such a brilliant way uh, to articulate something that many times we start out really good, yeah. but it ends up becoming very, very toxic because we have not explored destiny. Imagine uh, getting in a car with somebody and saying, you know, we came from the same town and I get gas at the same place you 
you do and never asking them, uh, where are we going? Yeah. And, and, you know, it's so, so powerful. And then you talk, you, you, you really got into this whole mother son thing. Yeah. And, uh, this woman who had the 34 year old son named Derek, yeah. who is living in the house with her and he's kind of mooching off of her. And she doesn't really, uh, if she were a man, we'd say man up yeah. and, uh, take responsibility because, uh, she has told herself a narrative mm -hmm. and all of those who tried to inform her a narrative that excuses the obvious. Yeah. And uh, it is so uh, apparent in so many people's lives that we get into these situations, sometimes really have a loving relationship with the son, with the girlfriend, with the co-worker. Yeah. You even mentioned a co-worker uh, who they uh, came from the same school and the same background, same yeah. fraternity. Yeah. And now this one guy is covering for the guy uh, because he feels some loyalty. Yeah. Even things we all go through every day. Yeah. Where do you draw the line? And you begin to share with us that these toxic relationships uh, often are killing one person and they're being sacrificed uh, because they do not have the courage to know when to let it go. Wow. Wow. Dad, you, you are, uh, you know, dead on. I mean, I, I've seen it in all different walks of life uh, and so many individuals struggle with it. And I'm, I'm excited uh, that the book has uh, added value and touched you and uh, your excitement to share with others, because I think so many individuals uh, need this. I often tell people that I wrote the book that I wish someone would have given me about 30 years ago. Right. Uh, because you and I, you, you, you know this and you've helped me even navigate through this from a leadership perspective. We go to schools and we matriculate and we get great degrees and we get great opportunities. But we are rarely taught the dynamics of how to handle these kinds of relationships. And I think it's so necessary for us if we're going to move into the destiny that God really has for us. Well, you're exactly right. Uh, so many times we will bring people on board, on our staff, and our church, on our team, and they're toxic, and especially pastors. We have a, a, a proclivity of wanting to hold on to everybody and nurture everybody, but there are some people that we need to really release in order for our destiny. One of the things that I, I particularly enjoyed about this book is the balance between practical, insightful, uh, sometimes psychological, sociological information with the theology. Yes, uh, generally, when you get a book written by a pastor, it's scripture after scripture after scripture, and it's his, his sermon notes that have been downloaded into a book. But this has substantive information and then validates it with theological examples that further strengthens the integrity of the thoughts that you made in such a powerful way that whether you are from a church or whether you are a pastor or whether you're a secular business person or, or a hip hop person, I can see <laughs> anybody. I really honestly can't see anybody who does business, who has relationships, who's ever had pain or, or made dumb decisions yeah. that can't pick up this book and find something that, that feeds them without it being overwhelmed or being preachy or being deeply psychological. No matter your level of life, this is your book. And I'm, I'm really, really thrilled about it. I'm not even trying to sell it. When I got through reading this book, I said, I want everybody in my church to have it. Wow. I want everybody on my staff to have it. It'll cut down conflicts in my office. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want my kids to have it so that I can protect them yeah. from doing some of the dumb things that I have done. Yeah. And so uh, I wanted to take a moment to personally thank you for filling in the gap between where theology ends and where psychology begins, and that gap is the mainstream of where many of us get stuck. Yeah. And, and, and because we are such loving people, we love to our own detriment, and sometimes mm -hmm. helping other people really is, really, really is killing us, not physically, but, but emotionally, spiritually. And, and when you talked about Lot and Abraham, sometimes they're killing our destiny. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, listen, guys, we've been talking about my new book, The People Factor, uh, and my dad, my spiritual father, Bishop Jakes, has chimed in in a tremendous way, which he always does, on chapter 13, when helping you is killing me, how to have healthy relationships with unhealthy people. Listen, if you don't have the book, listen, I don't know what's wrong with you. Go get it. Get one for you. Get one for your mom. Get one for dad. Get one for your best friends. Any individual that you are in a relationship with, you all need to read this book together. Bishop, dad... I love you. Thank you so much for taking time to do this. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. It's been a real pleasure uh, working with you today. And to everybody watching, go get that book. Amen.